We are about to start our meditation. Please allow your body to fall in an open and receptive position. Silence all phones.
And this concludes our meditation. Welcome to East Bay Church of Religious Science, where spirit abounds, love overflows, and spiritual transformation begins. Welcome home.
keeper that is who you are you are here you are here in this space in this moment as you have been walking beside us moving us leading us guiding us the total essence of us for there is no disconnect there is no separation there is only God in through and surrounded by all things at all times at all times even when the sky was dark even when the news was crazy even when sickness came you still made a way you still kept a promise you still showed up as God. And for that, I am grateful. For I know that this place is blessed. I know that our home is blessed. I know that our family is blessed. Oh, what a beautiful day it is to see our family come home. And for that, I am grateful. I am grateful for the East Bay Church of Religious Science. I am grateful for each and every individualized soul that is in this space. Each soul that is watching us on the screen, each soul that is touched by our love, by our vision, by our consciousness. I am grateful. I am grateful that I can breathe and that I can think and that I can be here with all of you. I am grateful for the vision and the leadership of our board of trustees that kept us safe. I am thankful for the praying arms of the practitioners who prayed for us through and through each day. I am thankful for each and one of our ministry workers, our, our ministers, our practitioners. I am thankful for all of our volunteers, our health and wellness ministry, that made sure our space today was perfectly capable to host us in a safe place. I am grateful. And I release, I release these words knowing that they, they have already manifested. And for that, I give thanks as well. And so it is. You are here.
living life I worship you I worship you We worship you. Welcome, 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 welcome to our Sunday celebration. I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for all of our viewers. Thank you for everyone who is in the room with us. This is a wonderful day. This is a God-filled day. And so now we are going to hear our sacred covenant. Please recite along with the video. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. And knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all its blessed expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for our beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of our new ministry is to glorify God I therefore know that my new ministry is a revelation of God and love as love. I further know that my new ministry is a fulfillment of that which has been promised by God, for it is written. True love has the power to heal and transform any situation that brings deep meaning to our lives. Love is patient. Love is kind. It always honors, always protects, always trusts always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as a beacon of light, growing us with love and wisdom, knowing that I and my beloved community must become that which we intend to bring forth and express in our new minister. I now know these truths about myself. I am inspiring, uplifting, and activating our community to live in harmony with all life. I am igniting individual and collective energetic movement towards spiritual truth and freedom. I am modeling and supporting profound levels of connection, healing, revealing, and growth in myself and community. I am cultivating an environment in which social justice and care for the needs of our greater community is part of our culture. I am engaging in mystical teachings and practices that support deep, personal and collective transformation and connection to oneness. As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they will be revealed in a way that will glorify God and serve the highest and greatest good of all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious, and so it is. Good morning, East Bay. I'm Precious Green, and these are your community announcements. It is such a joy to be back with you all, and I can't wait to dive in. So let's do it. Of course, our prayer room opens today at 1130. As I always say, don't leave our service with any weight on your mind. Take it to our practitioners who are ready to sit with you and affirm the truth of who you are. So again, our prayer room will open at 1130, and to access it, Simply click on the link in the chat or go to our website, www.ebcrs.org 
for the link. This week, we are taking things a little easy. It's July, it's kind of hot, but we still have a lot going on at East Bay Church. As always, make sure you go to our website for more details. Here's what's happening. On Wednesday, our food angels return for our food pantry service. Make sure you check your text messages and we'll let you know that morning what time to stop by the church for yourself, for your family, for your friends. We offer a bounty of produce and groceries for the entire community. And later Wednesday night, you'll want to make sure you power up with our own Mark Yarbo, who will be talking about living your best life. Our midweek service will begin with meditation at 615 and our power up service at 630. You don't want to miss it. And on Thursday, our spiritual economics class continues with our own Arlene King. This is a drop in workshop series. So if you miss a couple of classes, it's okay. It's not too late. They are having a great time actually talking about our economics and finances and the power we have over that. So join them on Thursday. Information on all of these events, definitely information about the class, is available on our website. So don't forget, go to www.ebcrs.org for all the details and Zoom links. Finally, we are so excited. We're in phase two of our re-entry and we hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. We have opened up reservations for attending our services in person. Please go to our website, once again, www.ebcrs.org for more information, everything you need to know, as well as where you can sign up to join us. And if you'd like to be uh, set up Whatever floats your boat, we've got you covered because we want this reentry to be amazing. Just go to our website, www.ebcrs.org, for more information on those volunteer opportunities. As always, thank you all so much. Have a great week.
we woke up this morning. <laughs> so at this time, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day. So I'm going to read her intro. Bishop Yvette Flunder is an American womanist, preacher, pastor, activist, and singer from San Francisco. She is the senior pastor of the City of Refuge, United Church of Christ in Oakland, and the presiding, yeah, <laughs> and the presiding bishop of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries. Bishop Flunder is also an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ and a graduate of the Ministry Studies and Master of Arts programs at the Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, California. She received a Doctor of Ministry degree from the San Francisco Theological Seminary. Her Doctor of Ministry project provided a framework for her work in the AIDS and transgender communities and for her activism in marriage and her activism in marriage equality. Her fulfillment comes, from, comes through seeing marginalized and disenfranchised people find their way to full faith and confidence in God. And in a God that is not punitive, in a God that is not angry and dismissive, but in a God that loves us, embraces us, welcomes us, and invites us. The next voice you hear after our music inspiration will be Bishop Yvette Flunder. And now I would like to acknowledge our music ministry, our musical inspiration. Yes, give them a hand. <laughs> That's right. Our musical inspiration today will be performed by Reflection Band with our own Sharon Henderson Lee. I'm sorry, Sharon Henderson, Lee Henderson on bass, Mark Ricky on piano, and Vino on drums. really healed me. So I'd like if, if you want of you to come and sing with me, Shield About Me. And you 
the lift of my head. Can we sing together? The Bless you, Angel. Amen. Amen. You sing like that without a rehearsal. That means we got something going on over here, like I said. <laughs> East Bay. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this house. It's an old, old, old song because, you know, I'm completely out of order. You know, I'm a I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> I'm a new thought Pentecostal. Imagine that. <laughs> Didn't think such a thing could ever happen, but it is true. And I had a, I was coming into the driveway and uh, my kudos to the health team yeah. for doing such an incredible job <laughs> to make everything ready for us. But I, it still hit me, and I know that it's, it's in, inappropriate within our time frame, but that's the Pentecostal part of me. 
that has no concept of time. So just forgive me. <laughs> How you doing, Mama? And it says, so I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom. Stayed on freedom. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind. Anybody else? Stay on freedom. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind. Oh, 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 yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, then I'm walking and talking with my mind. Come on, help me. Stay on. Oh, yes, I'm walking and talking with my mind. I, I believe you. Stayed on freedom, hallelujah, I'm walking and talking with my mind. Oh, stayed on freedom, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can I take you to one more? Well, my grandmother, ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on free. My grandma Bessie said it. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Come on. Stay on freedom. Hallelujah. It ain't no harm to keep your mind. Oh. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And tell your whole self to rejoice. For great is God. Great is spirit. Great is intention. Great is purpose. Come on, clap those hands in the sanctuary. Give thanks unto God. For God and good is good. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may have your seat. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. We are the people of the covenant. Yes. We are the friends of God. Go on. And God calls us friend. Yes. God bless you today. Good to see Reverend E. Yes. Oh, she means the whole world to me. God bless you. I love you, Mama. That's a dangerous God woman. I want to say it clearly. I'm telling you, she, I say she's a dangerous God woman because no matter what she gets, she gets over it. <laughs> I, I, I believe that when we move to another dimension, she'll still be here. <laughs> Just an incredibly powerful spirit and presence. Never forget those that labor among you. Never forget those who are our beginning. I am the hope and the dream of people who rest now. And I am grateful always for my elders. East Bay, I just love you. And I'm going to be conscious of the time as best as my Pentecostal self can be. <laughs> but I want you to know I'm excited to be in your company today. God bless you. Let me read a few verses of scripture from 2 Timothy, the first chapter. I also have to, by the way, give appreciation to Deacon Restina Ingram, who is with me today. <laughs> handling. I take a little handling, and she handles me very well. <laughs> and I'm very, very blessed to have her with me. 2 Timothy 1, and verses 1 through 7, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ, to Timothy, his beloved child. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, from Christ, from Jesus. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayer night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you that I might be filled with joy. I am reminded, Timothy, of your sincere faith, a faith that first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure, Timothy, it lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle 
Stir up the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give you a spirit of cowardice. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But rather a spirit of power Amen. and of love yes. and of a sound mind. We might say of self-discipline. <laughs> Paul expresses his love for the young Timothy in this passage today. In his letter, and he reminds Timothy of his roots. All of us have roots. Amen. There are some qualities that are good. Yeah. Some qualities not so much. Yeah. That we inherited. Come on now. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. You, you forget them if you, you try to forget them, but they come up, don't they? <laughs> in my family, in my grandmother's auntie, amen, would have been my great auntie, a great, great auntie, but her name was Aunt Mary Jane. Aunt Mary Jane, my family had to build a little house in the back of the big house for Aunt Mary Jane because she was given to what they call spells. Some of you all know about that. Every now and then, Aunt Mary Jane would look at you and you look at her a certain way and she'd just jump on you and beat you. <laughs> she didn't have to have a reason. It was just the way that you looked at her and she'd just jump on you and beat you. So they began to be able to diagnose when she was going to do that by certain ways. And so they built a little house in the back of the big house. And when Aunt Mary Jane was given to spells, they would take her to the house and it locked from the outside. And then they would give her her food, bring her her food and wait till she came out of it to introduce her back to the rest of the family. If you understand what I'm saying, they didn't throw her away, but they didn't know what to do with her. So they just put a place for her in the back. And I know that while we're clapping, we're thinking about somebody, aren't we? In that family, in that bloodline. And it may be the man or the woman in the mirror. How am I doing with that? But I am grateful that God helps us to profit and to overcome from the lessons we learn, both from our families, from ourselves, from our experiences with one another. We learn, we learn lessons, we learn how to navigate how to deal with the things that are both in our own selves and in, in, in the person and personalities of the people that we are around. We learn over time how to treat people in our family and how to insist that they treat us. We learn how to treat ourselves, how to love ourselves, how to care for ourselves, how to shake off the negativity that we may have that's intergenerational so we can be better for the generations that are coming. I say often that I'm a middle generation person. I, I turned 65, Reverend E, in the, in the COVID, and I'm gonna turn 66 in the COVID in a few more days. I'm a middle generation person. I have two generations I remember that have gone on, and I have two generations in front of me, children and grandchildren. So I am the bearer of the family stories told to me by my grandparents and my parents, and now if it's gonna get into Nubian and the rest of them going, you know, and Jamu and, and, and all of my children by the flesh and spirit, I will have to carry it. I am responsible to carry the family important legacies and realities and issues <laughs> and idiosyncrasies. <laughs> Who really knows how to clean their greens before they cook them? You know, those are the things <laughs> that you know because you carry from one generation to the next, right? Well, here's the truth. I am grateful that God has helped me and good has helped me to profit from both the good and how best also to determine how to undo some of these generational realities that have happened. I have gifts, we have gifts that we inherited. We have gifts that we also have learned and cultivated for the generations that are coming after us. So Paul is talking to Timothy about the gift. I want that to rest in your spirit today. The gift, the gift which we have inherited. We have gifts, we have gifts inherited, learned and cultivated. Paul is talking to Timothy about the gift, the purpose the call of the divine that took him, snatched him out of eternity and put him into time for a task. God has placed it on you, Timothy, 
by God's will, God's intention. God told me about it. I came and testified to you, laid hands on you and affirmed it. And now I'm back to tell you a couple of other things about the gift. It came from eternity into time, wrapped up in little baby Timothy. God gave Timothy the gift and Paul affirmed it. But some of us have divine gifts and callings that remain closeted. Listen to me for a moment. Because we cannot find environments and situations to unleash those gifts. Sometimes that's because we're around the wrong people. That's good what I said. Sometimes it is because we are caught up and locked up in intergenerational curses. What do I mean by that? Too many people saying that's too big. You can't do that. We've never done that. Anybody hear what I'm saying? We've never done that. No one in our family has ever done that. So you can't do that. But then there's a stirring in you that says that I'll be the first then. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be the first. We've never done it before, but I'm going to do it. I hear a new business that I need to do. I, I hear a new opportunity that I need to take. I may even need to relocate in some places where my family's never been, but because it's never happened doesn't mean that God and good cannot move us in that direction. Anybody hear me? Somebody's pregnant today. And the only reason that you can't give birth is because you got the wrong people in the birthing room who are saying to you, that is impossible. Hallelujah. It's impossible. Well, somebody thought that we would never fly, but we fly. Somebody thought that we couldn't go across the ocean in an ocean liner, but we do it. Some people thought that you could never be who you are and have what you have and believe what you believe, but Something greater than the opinions at times of people is moving in you to move to your next and highest self. And I have to tell you, sometimes the people you love, who love you, this is, I must be careful here. Sometimes the people who love you are the greatest hindrance to your vision coming to pass. Because you can make cupcakes. Let me, let me tell you what I mean. If you are a really good cupcake maker and you can feel spirit moving you to be a pie baker, <laughs> the people who have enjoyed your cupcakes, how am I doing with that? For years and years will tell you, well, I don't know if that's what you really need to do because if you do that, who is going to cook the cupcakes? And we've had cupcakes for multiple generations. And if you leave and, and then you're going to cook pies for heaven's sake, Who's going to cook the cupcakes? And we love your cupcakes. You make the best cupcakes in Oakland. We love your cupcakes. You'll cook, cook cupcakes till you die. If you keep listening <laughs> to people who hinder you, hallelujah, and tie you to the things that they want you to do. Oh, I'm talking good now. And it doesn't mean that your cupcakes are not needed or not appreciated or not wanted, but be careful about allowing people and circumstances and even the voice within to limit you from becoming all of what God and good intends for you to be. Release yourself. Release your visions. Release your intentions and start doing what you're dreaming. I'm talking good now. Start embracing what you have visioned because it wasn't placed in you for no reason. Let me hurry along. Many of us, many of us believe the Spirit is calling for an atypical response in this peculiar time we are in. And many of us have passion and purpose that was born in us. And we're on schedule for such a time as this. And this peculiar time needs our gifts. This season of atmospheric heat, this conjunction of political chaos, this time of war against the rights of women and voters of color and the LGBTQI women and men and those who don't identify specifically gender nonconforming, the reality and the mutation of the COVID pandemic, the pushback against truth telling. 
such that people want lessons in our schools that tell the story, come on now, of the subjugation of people of African descent and natives on this land. They want those stories removed from the history lessons of our schools so that young people will come along and think that all things are equal and all things have been equal. It is a lie. It is not true. It is not true and it won't cease to be the truth because people are taught not to teach it. The only way to fix it, come on, talk to me now, is to tell the truth about it, repent and be reconciled. And reconciliation carries with it reparations. I'm talking good today. This is good what I'm saying. But folks don't want to talk about that. Let's not talk about it. Let there be peace on us. Yes. And peace comes after repentance. That's another day. I'll, I'll talk more about that. So the reality and the mutation of the COVID pandemic is a part of our reality. We are in a perfect storm, which is a perfect place for people who are in touch with spirit. Oh, that means we've got to get ourselves suited and prepared to speak into an atmosphere that is unprecedented. The conjunction of all of these realities suggests that we are in a divine vortex. Somebody's got to hear what I'm saying. There's never been a time like this. There's never been this many different things going on at one time that we know of in recorded history, which means we are on assignment. If, if you could talk to your neighbor through your mask, I would tell you to tell your neighbor you are on assignment. On assignment. You are on assignment. Nobody gets away. You are on assignment. Hallelujah. You are on assignment. This is the time for the prayer warriors and the thinkers and the spirit people to rise up, get in our place, and do our work. As my grandmother used to say to me, Yvette, get your lazy. That's what she used to talk to me. On Saturday morning when I didn't want to get up and do my chores. Anybody know about chores? Get your lazy self out of this bed. She said, we got furniture to dust. We got dishes to wash. We got, we got to sweep the front. Get your, and if I didn't hurry up, she'd come and pull the covers off of me. We got to clean up and get through so we can get ready for church tomorrow. That's what she used to tell me. Get to and I think to myself, if you could just do something to banish my grandmother from my room, I would appreciate it so very much. Get to your lazy. Well, I hear the Spirit saying to me, get on your post of duty. All of your life experiences have been preparing you for such a time as this. Leaving it to other people. What is your task? What is your job? What is your responsibility? What are you waking up with in your spirit? What is God in good telling you to do to make a change in this time? And I'm going to get through this conjunction, this reality, these circumstances, pushing back against, we don't have to live like this. I need somebody to hear me. We don't have to live like this. Race against race, gender against gender. We don't have to live in the valley of sickness. We don't have to live like this. But it's going to take the prayer warriors. Come on now. It's going to take the peace warriors to speak into this time. And I'm going to quit in just a minute. I just want to leave just a couple of other things with you. Push back. Push back. We just came through Pride Month, the anniversary of the Greenwood Massacre, the anniversary of George Floyd's passing. We are desperately in need of people who are clear, filled with spirit, and intention for the whole world. Timothy was called for this time, but something hindered him. Some strings, some things caused Timothy's gift and purpose to be diminished. It was there, the call was there. Tell your neighbor, it's there. It's in you, honey. It's in you. The call was there. But perhaps it was demeaned or di dismissed or diminished. But it was there. 
it was asleep. It was perhaps dumbed down, but it was there. And this is what Paul said to Timothy. Take it with you. He said, stir up the gift. Every time I read it, it blesses me. Stir up the gift. Perhaps my task today, in this most peculiar of times, is to be Paul, Paulette. <laughs> to some Timothy or Timisha, how's that? <laughs> Who is here today? Stir up the gift. Stop waiting for somebody else. It's you. Hallelujah. It's you. Spirit is waiting for you. It's you. It's you. It's you. It's you. Stir up the gift. The metaphor actually means kindle, rekindle the fire. Rekindle the fire. Stir up the gift. There's still some live coals. But in order for a fire to come from them, you have to, you all good barbecuers know what I'm talking about. You have to stir it up, put some light kindling in it. Come on and get the fire going. Before you put heavy logs on it, you got to put some light kindling on it and get it going. And then next thing you know, it's strong enough to put something else on it and something else on it. Then you can drop your ribs on the top and you got something good that will come. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir it up. Don't stand off from it. Get into it. Start, get involved. Take some risks. Stir up the gift. Pay attention. Pay attention. Add fuel to the fire. Do what you need to do in your own prayer life, your own meditation life. Keep the fire burning because you don't know who you'll have to warm with it. Stir up the gift. Too much inspiration without education is problematic too. Read. Know what's going on. Inspiration needs education because, because we can be uninformed. And when we're uninformed, our gifts can be short-lived and temporary. But too much education without inspiration is oppressive. Oh, I'm talking good now. And it lacks purpose and it has no effervescence. Come on now. And too much education and inspiration without consecration. What does that mean? Spending time with spirit spending time with God will make you forget that God and spirit are at the root and core of everything that we are. And hallelujah! And, every, hallelujah. and everything that we do. Yeah. Now keep watch over your fire. Yes. Use it. Use it. In the end of this passage Paul says to Timothy, for God did not give you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody to get some fire up on you. God did not give you a spirit of fear. God did not give us cowardice. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Fear is torment. God gave you, Timothy, he said to Timothy, power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Power, courage, strength, love, sensitivity, and charity. Come on. Self-discipline, good sense, sobriety. Come on, talk to me. Power, love, and a sound mind. Power can be problematic without love. Love can be problematic without self-discipline. I'm talking good. But God gave you power, love, and a sound mind. And when these work together. Yeah, These right. gifts are an anointing from God yeah. that'll put you in your place and make you carry your flame. You'll be on fire everywhere you go. Yeah. Folks will see you coming a block before you get there. Yeah. When you pass by, they say, something passed by me. Yeah. What was that? I challenge you today by the vicarious laying on of hands. Yeah. Stir up the gift yeah. that is within you. We've got work to do. Yeah. In this peculiar time, we are on assignment. Yes. And by the laying on of hands, I declare that the gift of God and good in spirit is laying on your life. Yes. Let's get out there and make a better world. God bless you.
what you have to say. Come on, church. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the Spirit. Yes, I'm much Bishop Flunder. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your words. Now it is time for our gracious giving. Um, now that know that your your gifts help us to keep our our building open. It helps us to transform the community one soul at a time and it helps us to be here and be out in the community and out in the world. And so please let us recite our affirmation together. I give joyfully. I give prayerfully. I give with thanksgiving. So there will be baskets somewhere. <laughs> I believe our ushers have them. Yes, our ushers have our baskets. So what you could do is raise your hand and they will come to you. And no, we're not doing that. And so <laughs> I think when you, if you do have your offering in hand today, then just know that you can drop that off before you leave. So just keep it in your hand as a blessing. and bless it, <laughs> and then we will um, receive it at the end of the service. Yes, yes, yes.
in a, in a nice, orderly way, and they will instruct you on how to do that. You are an incredible example of how this can be done. Yes. <laughs> so I want you to hear me say, East Bay, you are doing an incredible, incredible job. Thank you so very much for the consideration of health and the consideration of community. Yes. How beautiful it is. Yes. And now unto God who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before one another's presence and the presence of God's glory. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power in us and through us, both now and forever. Receive the gifts from God. And my encouragement is stir them up and let's get our tasks done. God bless you, go in peace. I have another assignment. Tragedies, commonplace, all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. The economy's down and people can't get enough pay. As for me, all I can say is thank, thank you, you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hey, you all know this. There are folks without homes living out in the street and drug habits some say they just can't beat. There are muggers and robbers, no place seem to be safe. But you've been our protection every step of the way. And we want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Could have been me. Thank you. Outdoors. Thank you. No food. Thank hey. you. No clothes. Thank you. I could have been alone. Thank you. Without one friend. Thank you. Or just another number. Thank you. With a tragedy. You. But you didn't see things Thank to you. let none of these things Thank be. You. Every day by your Thank power, you. you keep keeping Thank me. You. And I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Let's go out rejoicing. God bless you as my friend.